Hi everyone, Megan Cox here, and today we will be going deeper with Google Docs. If you are just getting started, don't forget to check out our Getting Started with Google Docs video, linked in the comments below. In addition to creating Google Docs from your Google Drive, you can also access them at docs.google.com. It will bring you to a page similar to this, where it shows you all of your recent documents as well as a gallery to choose from. By clicking on template gallery, you can expand to see several different templates to start with or choose from. You can also search your domain to see domain specific templates created by your organization. To use one of these, you can simply double click and customize it to your needs. Today, I'm going to demonstrate some of my favorite features in um, Google Docs by creating my own template. You can see here, I have created a Google Doc and I've collected some resources for students on the three states of matter. I also have two tasks here for them. I want them to list some examples and answer this question. As you can see, my doc currently is not very visually appealing. So I'm going to spruce up this document while I show you some of those advanced features. One thing to note is that most of the icons in Google Docs are pretty true for all of the Google tools, as well as similar to the formatting options in tools like Microsoft Word and Apple's Pages. I can simply select my text and make adjustments as I need using the toolbar um, with these basic functions. However, you might want to customize fonts and make things a little bit prettier. Here you can see I have a drop down of many fonts. Um, by default, you will not have this many fonts. And if you want to search or add new fonts, simply click on the font name, choose more fonts, and here you can search from a bank of fonts and any that you like, you can click to add and choose OK. This will now be added to your list of fonts and remain in your list in all Google platforms. Another great feature is the ability to insert different types of media. Here I can insert images in a number of different ways. I can upload files from my computer. I have a built-in tool to search the web. In doing this, it will generate several pictures that I can now choose an image I like and click insert. And I can move this around on my page. As you will see, right now, the formatting is in line with my text. I can choose to wrap text or break text as well. Notice there is also a margin. So if you want your text to appear closer to an image, you can make adjustments as needed. You can also choose to leave your image to make your image move with text on your page, or you can leave it in a fixed position so that it will not move as you add more text. As you are inserting images, one other thing to note is that you can also find images from your drive, your photos, take a photo, or by URL. If you insert a photo by a Google image URL, you can actually insert GIFs or animated photos as well. Now that I have the header to my page, I can also insert other options. I can insert horizontal lines, as well as tables and charts. In this case, I have three activities that I want students to do. Those links are a little hard to look at. So I'm going to insert a table with three boxes. What I would like to do now is insert images and text and link my activities. So my first text, my first link is a text. So read the text below. The second one is a video. 
The third one is a game. So I'm just gonna kind of put some placeholders, do some formatting, um, and organize my chart. This will now allow me to um, copy and paste my links in the box, or I can actually insert and hyperlink. By doing this, I can hit the link button on my page right here, and then paste in my link. I can also select my text and choose insert link and then paste it in. Or if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can select that text and you can choose control K on a PC or command K on a Mac and you can add hyperlinks. This is very helpful to clean up the appearance of your pages and it will also allow you to link to different places on your page. For example, if I wanted um, my students to answer this question, but maybe I know that this is going to be a little bit more difficult and I want to give them a hint, hint. Rewatch your video. I could, oh, let me fix that. I could link this back to the video up here and send them back to the page. So to do that, I'm going to make this actually what I call a bookmark. Insert bookmark, and now it's a, it's a placeholder on my page. From here, I'm gonna do the same thing that I would do if I wanna create a link, and I can hit that link button. I can go to insert link, or I can use my keyboard. And instead of pasting a link, I'm gonna choose a bookmark. And it's gonna show me any bookmark I made on the page. I can choose the one that says watch this video, and now it will take them back up to the top of the page where my video or my content is. Um, this will allow you to create hyperdocs or places where you can kind of help kids navigate from one page to the next in an organized way. Um, in addition, you will see the ability to insert drawings. Drawing is um, a tool that allows you to manipulate text boxes, images, shapes, lines, and create your own images. And then once you hit save and close, it will appear on your page. If you notice on your toolbar, you have a couple other options. Under your tools, you have some helpful things such as spelling, word count, the explore button, a dictionary, the ability to translate, as well as voice typing. There are additional accessibility settings that vary depending on the device or browser you are using. I would like to show you the Explore button. In all Google tools, the Explore button can be found under Tools or in the bottom corner of your page. What it does is open a search bar for anything listed on your page. Since my page has information about matter, you can see that it's given me suggested topics and images. I can also search keywords and it will give me web articles, images to choose from, or it will help me search my Google Drive for anything with that keyword. Really easily, I can click a photo, preview it, or I can drag it to insert it. This is a helpful way to kind of um, that Google Docs allows you to enhance your documents by giving you suggestions and easy in-tool access. In addition to that, you may choose to look at add-ons. Add-ons are additional web-based programs that serve a purpose that is not built in in Google Tools. To get these, you simply click add-ons and get add-ons, and it will take you to a web store. Here, you can search for apps, based off keyword or function, 
or browse to find tools that serve specific purposes. One tool that I would like to show you today, or one add-on that I would like to show you today, is icons for slides and docs. After installing this, you simply click on add-ons and choose start, and it will pull up a bank of icons for you. In these boxes, I would like to insert an image that indicates what they're going to do. Since this is a text, I want to see if I can find an icon that will indicate to my students they need to read. I simply choose the one I want. In this case, it allows me to choose color, and then I choose insert. Now, I have an icon in the box. If I want to do the same thing for here, I might search video. And I'm going to find an icon that's going to tell kids they're going to watch something. So again, this universal symbol that tells them to play something, I'm going to insert it. And this time I chose to make it red. This is a game, so I want them to know they're going to play something. So I'm going to just choose a basic game controller, something that they would recognize. I'm going to make this blue. Now, if I want to um, adjust my page, I can take these images. I can also wrap them. If I double click on them, I can crop them. Or I can go up here to image options and get back to some of those adjusting features. Now that I have the page the way that I want it, um, I want to show you a couple additional options. Of course, like any other Google tool, you can hit share and send to your kids. You can also post as an assignment on Google Classroom. When you are sharing documents with students and they have completed their work, one really nice tool is to change it from editing mode, where you are actually changing the document, to suggesting mode. By clicking on this, it is going to allow me to make suggestions for students to take or not. Let's say that a student answers, I think sand is a solid because... Da, 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 da. In suggesting mode, I can come in here and now when I type, I can give prompts. Think about... Da, 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 da. Or I can take a word and I can backspace that word out and replace it with another word. So for editing or um, revising features, students will get messages like the ones below where they can see, oh, do I want to take that suggestion, suggestion and accept it? Do I want to write a reply? Or they can completely reject it. This allows you to make suggestions and corrections without changing their work so that they can see the suggestions you are making. One other thing that I always love to share is under the file option, you have the ability to make copies, download Google Docs and other formats, send as an email attachment automatically without leaving this page, publish to the web, so that you can make it a public website. And you also have the ability to change language and page setup. Page setup allows you to change it from landscape, different sizes, as well as different margins. Thanks for tuning into our video today. Don't forget to check out other videos, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media.